back by popular demand. Nope, first time in the gamer heaven. Welcome. Finally on the channel by heavy request, the Cinch Gaming PS5 remappable four button pro controller. God dang, that is a mouthful. And this controller has a mouthful of features. The mechanical bumpers and triggers we've come to expect from pro controllers, four remappable rear buttons. The remapping process isn't a fun journey, but you can remap them. Cosmetically, the controller's beautiful. She used to model back in college, you can tell. Soft touch face plate and rear shell feels good on the hands. Input lag on PC is fantastic. She liked being overclocked. And this could be one of the best rear your button designs if you have smaller fingers. But please, before you cock lock and pull the trigger on purchasing one of these controllers, I advise you to watch the rest of the video because this is gonna be the most comprehensive in-depth review of this controller on the planet. Let's get it. This is your controller, Captain. We've reached 6,900 feet. Go ahead and start flicking the sticks and molly in the back paddles. Mm, you don't like back paddles? How about those rear buttons? We've tested almost 100 custom and premium controllers, and we're only at the beginning. You need a thumbstick guide or a tutorial on how to overclock your controller? Check out the controller playlist. Bing bong. Controller Captain out. A quick disclaimer for my audience, the Stallions and Stallionettes, this controller was sent for review, but this is going to be an honest, comprehensive review. I haven't been paid or told to say anything about it. If there's any con shortcomings or areas of improvement, you're going to hear about it. So these companies make better products over time. Mine was wrapped like a late Christmas present. I don't know if that's because I'm a content creator and they want me happy. Or if everyone gets this treatment, the inner box is basic cardboard and your controller is held in a plastic dust cover. Pretty basic unbranded packaging, but this is one of the most expensive controllers I've tested. So I'm wondering where that savings is going. Not looking for an included USB-C cable. I'm not a greedy whore, but I am looking for a little card explaining how to rebind the rear buttons. But you have the stock Sony instruction manual, which belongs in the trash because this controller has been taken from stock to customize by Sin so the Sony warranty is no longer in play. A very underwhelming unboxing experience for a controller in this price point. Cosmetically, unlike the audio quality right now, this controller is absolutely gorgeous. It has this nice flat matte finish. Most of their faceplate options are solid colors or gradients, but this looks very good. And I do like the soft touch rear shell, which feels really buttery smooth. But since this is a custom controller with a builder, we are gonna judge that for the cosmetic session, considering this is just my selection. Not really, this is a pre-built. This is just my controller as spec, and you can build one however the hell you want. Want. But customization wise, I'm going to give them a 4.5 as they let you tweak damn near everything except for trigger colors. You have no control of that. And there is only four rear shell options. I'd like to see that expanded with some hydro dipping graphics as well. Now as for the weight and dimensions of this controller, these are jeans, by the way, they just look like sweats. Cinch starts with a licensed factory OEM Sony controller dimensions of that on screen here. In my opinion, it is just as comfortable, maybe a skosh down from the Xbox One series, but a great step up from the DualShock 4. Then you've got these rear buttons, which don't really take away from comfort much because we're you want to naturally rest your hand. That's kind of where the buttons are at anyway. Granted, hitting them isn't the most comfortable experience. Entire section for the rear buttons later. They don't take away from the comfort at all. And that's great. I'm going to give ergonomics and comfort a, as I stare off in the distance because I'm so deep in thought a 4.5 out of 5. I really put a lot of thought into the numbers I'm about to say. This is really comfortable. A really comfortable controller for sure. As for build quote, you know what? This thing turned on. Let me turn off. Probably doing stuff on my PS5 right now. I hate that. Also to turn off a PS5 controller you accidentally turned on, you have to hold down the PlayStation button button for like 15 seconds. Long time. As for build quality, as I do the stress or flex test, or try and bend the controller, I don't hear any creaks or moans and groans. If you hear any noises, it's me accidentally hitting buttons. Also the panel gap, the seam where the front face plate and rear shell meet is very, very taut. QC tolerances look good here. There's like hardly any side to side wiggle in their rear button system, which I love to see. How much does this controller weigh? That's indicative of build quality, right? At least that's power raise theory, putting those lead weights in the palms. Heavier controller, make the customer think they got a quality product in hand. Joke's on them. I took those lead weights out and put them in my tackle box. Caught me a red snapper. 230 grams with their four rear buttons. How much does a stock dual sense weigh? There's controllers everywhere. Ooh, 279. Wait, there's no way that's correct. 279 for a stock dual sense. So this is actually lighter. Why? Because it has mechanical bumpers and triggers, not the adaptive trigger modules, which are pretty big motors that control how stiff or light the triggers get in gameplay. This doesn't have that obviously much lighter, but this also feels like they removed the vibration, the haptic feedback. Hope that's not the case. Let's test it real quick. If it is, instead of me mini ranting, I'm just gonna link a video I made recently about why you don't wanna remove the haptic feedback at adaptive triggers from a PS5 controller if you're going to be playing PS5 games on your PS5. Because games use them, and besides just immersion to throw you into that game world, there are also a couple of performance bindings that can't be changed in game, such as Returnal and Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart. So for first party SIE games, you might want the adaptive triggers and the haptic feedback. Let me see if they took out the rumbles, which again, there is no rumbles on a PS5. Haptic feedback motors in the palms. B-roll on screen here of a disassembly or teardown I did of a DualSense showing the side-by-side -side visual difference of old school rumble force motors versus haptic feedback. Ready to deploy. 
They did it. They freaking did it. They removed the haptic feedback motors from the controller. No disclosure, no mention of that whatsoever on the landing page. That is a big deal for a PlayStation 5 controller. On an Xbox One or PS4, it wasn't a big deal. Removing the rumbles? Who gave a damn? Saves battery life, saves weight. On the PS5, the haptics are actually good and used a ton. And if you're gonna remove it, that's cool. Give gamers the option to remove the rumbles or at least a little disclosure or statement saying, hey, in order to use our rear paddle design, our rear button design, I should say, we need to remove the haptic feedback motors. They're actually here in the palms, which is right where your rear buttons are. Granted, there's a ton of rear button PS5 dual senses that have the haptic feedback motor and rear buttons. So it is possible for sure. At least let the gamer know that when they get this in hand and they go to play a Sony interactive first party game, they're not gonna get that immersive crunching on sand and all that crap. Again, a very well laid out articulate video linked in the description below on the topic as to why you do not wanna remove the haptic feedback motors from a DualSense controller. And Cinch, if you're going to, which you clearly did, just a little note or asterisk on the builder saying, in order to install our rear button systems, we need to remove the vibration functionality. Now as for a quality control reputation, I'm the only person that I know personally that owns a Cinch controller. So unlike the Elite Series 2, which sold hundreds of thousands, maybe millions of units, so there's a big negative quality control reputation. These are small hand batch crafted, as they say on their website, meaning there isn't that many Cinch controllers out in circulation in comparison to like scuff that mass produces and sends out these controllers. I haven't heard a positive or negative quality control rep around Cinch Gaming, which is a good thing because their warranty system is terrifying. As for the D-pad or direction buttons, they do have an option for $40 on their builder to get a mechanical D-pad and face buttons, which I do recommend you pop or opt for. These are the stock membrane switches you'll find in a standard PlayStation controller, but cosmetically, I think they look gorgeous. And $40 for a mechanical D-pad and action button set is quite fair and I'd recommend popping for it. D-pad's gonna get a 4.5 from me. As for the face or action buttons, they are also a membrane switch. So there's a rubber plunger mechanism underneath the shell. No complaints here. They feel just like a stock PS5 controller. It would have been awesome to test and feel their mechanical option. However, that's not on this instant ship version, but the option is available in the builder for 40 bucks alongside the D-pad. I'm gonna give it a 4.5 out of five as well. As for the accessory button suite, so that is gonna be the touchpad, share and options button, as well as the PlayStation and mic mute button. Now, a lot of times with these custom controller companies, when they reassemble them, these share and option buttons are sunken in a little bit further into the front shell, making them hard to hit. You have to get a fingernail in there and whatnot. That doesn't seem to be the issue here. Also, the touchpad doesn't have a weird pivot point or anything, and everything is as it should be. I'm gonna give it a four out of five. Now, as for the joysticks, thumbsticks, or on PlayStation, analog sticks as they've been calling them all the way back to the PS2. No, actually the PlayStation 1 had an analog stick version. I had it as a kid. It worked in Tomb Raider and stuff. Anyway, for $20 in their builder, they do have an option that will give you swappable thumbsticks, which you're going to see with most other pro controller companies. These, however, are the standards, the stalkers, so they are quite short. So if you're playing primarily first-person shooters or third-person action adventure with shooting, for that matter, like Uncharted and Last of Us, I still use rear button controllers for pretty much all those. You might want a little bit more height on the right sticks. So you can and bump up the in-game sensitivity a couple of skoshes. One thing I do like, all PS5 controllers do have anti-friction rings around the outside of the thumbstick gates. So when you're at full lock, it's nice and smooth like. Nothing's offending me from a glance, but let's hook it up to the PC for a little bit of technical analysis to get that data. Yeah, all the way down. We'll take it in bay two. She's ready for maintenance. Did you like the way I was directing that air traffic? Not seeing anything, you know why? Because it's over here. Wireless controllers, standard gamepad vendor. Interesting, have not seen this label for a controller before in gamepad tester, which means the PCB, the printed circuit board is communicating a little bit differently with this website. That's okay. Oh. And what's just okay, but not great is gonna be the performance of these thumbstick modules right out of the box as I move them to and fro, give them the old wiggledy biggle, and then I stop. The right thumbstick, which is gonna be for aiming, really does want to be faithful to me and bounce back to 0.00392. It just simply can't when I feather ever so gently and then stop, as you can see, Axis 2 is still wiggling around, but not bad. This is not going to give you out of the box stick drift or anything silly like that, but these are very indicative of PS5 controllers. Let's test the circularity. This is going to give us our accuracy. So are there any areas on the thumbsticks where your inputs are not being registered? So in this case, bottom right, perhaps on the left thumbstick, but not bad. In fact, not just not bad. These are actually quite good results. Results. Let's run a couple more to make sure that that's uh, that's what's going on here. And that bottom left is acting a little bit silly on the left analog stick, but still, this is the lowest average error rate I have seen on a PS5 DualSense controller. These thumbsticks performed quite good in gamepad tester as well as in gameplay on the PS5 and PC. No complaints there. You are going to have the anti-friction 
rings, as all PS5 controllers have that. But with these instant ships, these pre-built, you're not going to have the swappable thumbsticks. So I would recommend getting some control freaks or some kind of pop-on thumbstick caps to give you a little bit more height and more grip. What's compatible with these? Licensed PS4 and 5 control freaks work great. Xbox and Switch control freaks not so much. Or of course, you could get some universal slipover caps because, well, they're universal. They slip over damn near anything. I do have a comprehensive thumbstick guide linked in the description below. As for the bumpers and triggers, $40 will get you a pair of mechanical bumpers and triggers. A set, I guess I should say, because there is four of them, which I do strongly recommend popping for that option if you have another controller with the adaptive triggers to play your Sony exclusives. Now, these are very quiet, so you're not going to pick them up over voice comms, or if you're a streamer or YouTuber, your mic ain't going to pick up too much of it if you got a strong noise gate. Sound check the background music. That's the bumpers. Here's the triggers. Bumpers. Triggers. Bumpers and triggers, identical shape and size, as well as the stock plastics from a OEM stock Sony controller, but they do feel great. I'm giving the bumpers a five out of five. As for the triggers, there is no company currently that offers trigger locks or stops for the PS5 DualSense, but there are many companies that offer these mechanical digital triggers, and these ones are great. They do require a little bit further pull at two millimeters versus some of the competitors that are at one millimeter, but by no means is this a long pull or a lot of travel. As you can see, that is a very short pull to actuate the switch and I actually do like the feeling of these more than a lot of its competitors. These triggers are an absolute joy. I'm going to give them a five out of five. We've talked the front. We've talked the top. Let's talk the back. As for the rear buttons, this controller has four of them. You can opt for two of them, but uh, four is double that, so why the heck not, right? Now, this is now the fourth PS5 controller that I've tested with four rear buttons, and they are all laid out so differently, it's insane. You would think all four button PS5 controllers are created equal. No, no, the layouts are completely different. Now, the first six to eight hours of using this controller, I didn't like them at all because they are incredibly close together. By far the closest set of rear buttons I've ever seen on any platform, come to think of it, which isn't bad. I mean, that's great. If you've got small fingers, maybe you're a lady or a younger gamer or a gentleman with smaller hands, this would be great because you can hike up your hands up here and I can cover all four of the buttons simultaneously. It's possible. I'm doing it right now. I've got my ring finger on the bottom two and I've got my middle finger on the top two, but this is not comfortable. They're very cramped and I have to hike all my fingers very high up the controller to get a good grip. So then I thought maybe this is one of the rear button controllers where I cover all four of the rear buttons with just my middle finger. For example, the Battle Beaver. That's how I use that one, but not really because the Battle Beaver buttons are up here, not down here, making it possible to hit the top two with this part of your middle finger and the bottom two with the tip. Not so much the case here. Upon further usage of this controller, I have found it usable like this. However, it just ain't comfortable for me. Now the process to rebind or remap the rear buttons takes forever and you could accidentally put it into remapping mode in game because there is no button on the front of the controller you need to hold down, such as the mic mute button or the share button or the touchpad in combination with the rear button and concurrent face button you want to link together. To put this controller into remapping mode, you have to hold down one of the rear buttons for around 20 to 30 seconds. I didn't time it, but it's a long hold. And once you've done that, so I'm going to hold down this rear button, which I want bound to cross or jump. I'm going to hold it down for a small eternity. Keep in mind, you could be in gameplay right now. Maybe you're crouched down in a corner getting shot at. Probably not the best time to rebind your buttons. I'm still holding down the button, by the way. There it goes. <laughs> All right, we're in remapping mode. Keep in mind, you have to do this for each button. It's not like you stay in remapping mode like a lot of other pro controllers. You have to enter mapping mode for each button. And again, 30 second hold down to enter mapping mode. That's two minutes with no human error. That's crazy. Once you see the red flashing light to the left of the touchpad, you are in remapping mode. And now you will press whatever face button you want bound to that rear button. It's great that you can remap on the fly. You don't need to launch a software program on your PC or phone or anything, but that is a very slow process to remap all the buttons. In comparison to other dual senses I've tested where you have to hold down the mic mute button, the face button, and the rear button, bam, and then it binds it. Now, I thought long and deep about this. It would be pretty hard to accidentally enter remapping mode considering you have to hold down a rear button for around 30 seconds, which you don't usually do. Even if you have crouch bound to one of these rear buttons as the good Lord intended you should, and you have it set to hold crouch in game, you're probably just spamming that button to crouch up and down, to bob up and down in a gunfight to be a harder target. You're probably not sitting there holding it for 30 seconds. I can't think of a time I've sat there holding a rear button for like 30 seconds, but it does take a freakishly long time to bind. And since there is no swappable profiles, every time you launch a new game or share this controller with somebody else that likes different rear buttons, you have to go 
go through this whole process again. All right, I've deliberated on this for a while. I'm gonna give the rear buttons a one out of five. All right. That's a one out of five. Which is crazy. It's a four button system. It should be getting at least a 2.5 out of five. No, sweetheart, I'm afraid not. They're just so close and cramped together. And I understand there's no such thing as average size hands. I'm 5'11". I'm a 5'11 North American male. This is what my hands look like. It's what your hands look like too, sweetheart, apparently. Bunched up to the high heavens. I just don't like that. Plus it takes a small family vacation to remap the buttons. Long time. They're also pretty darn loud. Not the loudest rear buttons or paddles I have tested, but quite loud. You'll probably pick that up over Discord comms or if you're a streamer or YouTuber. One out of five, dude. One out of five. That's the, that's it. How about the out of the box input lag or delay? How we're gonna get the measurement of that is by using a little program called X input test to get the refresh rate slash polling rate. Those two words are used interchangeably. We're gonna run a little test, but the laboratory is not prepped yet. What does that mean? This program is for an Xbox 360 controller. What we're using is a PS5 controller. We're gonna launch a program called DS4 Windows. There is an update. Well, slap it to me, sweetheart. <laughs> you talk weird and I like it. I was gonna full screen, but you know what? Let's put it right next to my face. You have a DualSense controller. She's on 12% battery life. You know why? Because I was playing with her last night hard in preparation for the review. So we don't need to do anything further with this program because we're already spoofing the PC to think that this is a Xbox 360 controller. But just to confirm that, click on edit. Let's make this full screen. Over here in the other tab, virtual controller settings, emulated controller in the drop down, select 360, which is the default, and make sure that this box is not ticked. And then you hit apply. I don't really need to do that. I only had to do that once when I plugged in a DualSense controller and launched DS4 Windows. After that, every single time I plug in a DualSense controller, those settings are automatically launched. It spoofs my PC into thinking it's a 360 controller, which gives it more compatibility with a lot of other launchers and older games and programs like Rewazd and overclocking programs and stuff like that. Now, if I hit the X up here, that is not good. It's going to tell me something that I don't want to see. This will disconnect all your connected controllers. No, I will not proceed. I'm going to minimize it to the background. And now if I launch the program, it says, give it to me. I'm ready and waiting. So I'm going to start rotating the left analog stick in a circle, throwing, throwing it back in a circle. Fantastic, the first pull, we have a 3.9 millisecond for the average, that's good. Under a millisecond of jitter, and this controller does have a 250 hertz pulling rate out of the box. Let's run a couple more. Now, if you'd like to know what I'm doing right now, I do have a comprehensive overclocking guide linked in the description below that you can feel free to follow along with. Much more consistent that time with a minimum and maximum closer to each other, a lower average and even lower jitter. Why? Less operator error. I was much more smooth with my inputs on the thumbstick that time. <laughs> Cool. So these are very consistent numbers. Back to back pulls. She's not losing any performance or anything. I'm going to give the out of the box input lag or delay a four out of five. Repeat a four out of five. She's consistent. Is that controller susceptible to being overclocked? I'm going to show you. I'm gonna show you right now. In the same controller folder, we're gonna launch the Lord of Mice overclocking program, which we do spend a lot of time in in the overclocking guide I mentioned. Make this a little bigger. We're gonna expand the child name, which is the actual controllers. This is our controller. It is recognized as a wireless HID. Whoa, a little more information, cool. HID compliant controller. This is the keyword over here. Just to make sure when I unplug it, it will disappear. Sure enough, you're a smart man or woman. When I replug it, it will reappear. Now it is showing an estimated six milliseconds of input lag or delay and that it is not being overclocked. Don't worry about any of these numbers. It is still spoofed with DS4 Windows as an Xbox 360 controller. If I stop running DS4 Windows, this will actually change names and this value will change to four. But let's overclock this controller and you do not need to close DS4 Windows to do that. Highlight the controller. You can either do that here or here. Install service. Yes, sir. Default, <laughs> not a chance. 1000, pin it out. <laughs> Install service, open. Filter on device, that's the, the ticker. So tick the box. Install service, open. Overclocked. We're not done yet, you son of a gun. Gonna have good fun on the Bayou. Unplug the controller, replug it back in. HID compliant controller is overclocked. Estimated one millisecond of input lag or delay. Let's test it. Same program that we ran before. X input test. Oh yeah. <laughs> Excuse me, I'm just clearing my throat. A couple of things I want to note. Did you see how quickly that test finished? That's because the computer is receiving its 1000 samples or inputs that it needed in like under a second, as compared to me sitting there for about four seconds with the stock clock spinning the analog stick. Still consistent, but this is what I like to see. We're already under one millisecond of input lag or delay on the first pull. Polling rate, 1000. The jitter is low, like my credit score in college. It's it's down there. Oh, you got new material. Good, to, good, to, good. Not recycling jokes anymore. Sick. All right, uh, let's run a couple more and average 
force them out because that is the scientific method. We have to have a control and uh, you know, I don't know what I'm talking about. Let's just do the thing. Jeez, how low can you go? We might as well be doing the limbo over here. A 0 0.93 millisecond. That's fast. So if you're using this controller wired to the PC, you are getting about 0 0.93 milliseconds of input lag or delay. And by using the Bluetooth overclocking method in DS4 Windows, you can get around two milliseconds of input lag or delay wirelessly via Bluetooth. I've done it on video. I got the photographic proof. Video where it didn't happen. I mean, I used to say that all the time. I just started making videos for everything controller related. I'm going to give overclock performance a five out of five. That is the maximum score because Sony does it correctly with the DualShock 4 for PS4 and the DualSense for PS5. They're not pulling rate locked. You can overclock them to your heart's content. Xbox controllers, you can overclock them. It'll make them a little bit more consistent, but it's not really going to lower your input lag or delay because they're pulling rate locked. As I mentioned during that overclocking guide, five out of five, baby. Over here on cinchgaming.com, the custom controller company, the one and only. There's not, there's no others. You stand alone. A little sarcastic, great slogan, a lot of confidence there. I will say realistically, they do have a good amount of cosmetic or appearance options. One of the things I like, they separate the left and right bumper. So if you wanted a separate color on each, that's great. However, you have no color control over the triggers whatsoever. So not even paired up as a duo, you have no trigger control whatsoever, which I understand might be because Sony is using those adaptive trigger modules. However, having customized controllers myself, you can remove that little trigger shell and spray paint it, hydro dip it, whatever you want yourself. Cinch definitely has the capability over there. Their website is pretty well laid out and easy to navigate. You've got your holiday sales over here, which is going to be a little bundle of everything they've got going on. However, the instant ships is going to be the pre-built one size fits all. Almost all of the pre-builts are only two rear button, not four rear button variants. And since you do not customize these or spec them out in a builder, you're going to get sent a default out of the box rear button layout that you can't rebind. But if you're hell bent on taking the pre-built route because you just don't want to spend time in the builder or whatever, then I do recommend getting the exact model that I popped for. Maybe not the color, which is crimson, but you want the PS5 Remap Pro, which is going to give you remap capability. Now, I will say the process to remap the buttons is not the most fluid. And of all the pro controllers I've tested for PS5, it is the most clumsy and takes the most time out of game. But at least you can remap it with this model. Ooh, boy. Now, as far as price and platform, they do have controllers for PS4, 5, and Xbox, meaning one in series. They're interchangeable across generation. Now, when you click on one of these options, it's going to take you to two subs options. Do you want a pre-built over here, which is going to take you to the instant ships? Or do you want to customize, which is going to take you to their builder? And their builder is quite hefty with cosmetic options. I've never heard this piece called mid. So usually this is either called the chin or trim piece on a PS5 controller, but whatever. Laser engraving. I don't know if this is actually etching or cutting into the plastic shell. That would be awesome. If it's like what aim controllers does, where they stick on a little decal with your gamer tag, I don't really recommend that. The colors weren't very vibrant and poppy, and it looked like a cheap vinyl or decal that was stuck on there. But if it's actual laser engraving, that's fantastic. As for thumbstick caps, you do have two options. You can go the permanently affixed, non-removable option, or for an extra $20, I would recommend popping for the interchangeable sticks. Save you a little bit of money on control freaks or generic thumbstick add-ons, because you'll be able to pop on different heights of sticks. But if you don't select that option, you will have different color options, as these are permanently going to be affixed to your controller. For a buck, you can add some color to the anti-friction rings around the outside of the thumbstick gates. I like that. They have some face button options. I don't like the solid ones that replace the lettering. I do like ones like this, where you can still see the logos, not lettering with PlayStation. It's symbols, if you will, cross, square, circle, and triangle. We've been hitting them since 94, 95 in North America. Remap chip is an extra $23. I absolutely do recommend that you pop for this, even if you're somebody like myself that uses the same key bindings or button layout 99% of the time, but maybe you're playing a game that's a little bit different. Maybe you want to use a D-pad button bound to a rear button, or you're sharing the controller with somebody else that doesn't like rear buttons, wants to deactivate them or change them up on their own. You can remap them. And for $23, I think that's absolutely worth it. If you're already spinning a dick load on a controller, that's the actual medical term. Why not spend a little bit schmeckles load more to not have buyer's remorse and be like, God dang it, I can't rebind for Apex Legends now. This is stupid. Anyway, trigger pull type. This is an actual performance modification. It's going to be those mechanical digital triggers. Now, as a lot of other pro controller companies do, it is linked bumpers and triggers, which is going to give you a very short two millimeters of squeeze and mechanical switches. I do recommend popping for this upgrade unless this is your only controller on PS5 and you're using it to play those PS5 exclusives that use the adapted triggers heavily, but you probably have that standard controller that came with the console for those games, so you should pop for this option. For those competitive first-person shooters, it really does make a world of difference. Think about it. You don't have to squeeze the trigger and wait for the registration or actuation. As soon as you click the button, and I do mean their hair trigger, their feather soft, you're shooting the dude on screen or chick. You get sent back to the lobby equally. 
equal opportunity around here. This was savagely confusing. This option was brought to my attention by a subscriber and I did a little bit of investigation myself, meaning I contacted my representative at Cinch Gaming that sent the controller for review, as well as did some digging on my own to find out, is this a fix if you have already developed stick drift or is this a preemptive measure to stop stick drift in its tracks? That's an exaggeration. They're still using potentiometer thumbstick modules, not magnetic hall effect sensors. So you can still get stick drift, but these are the modules that VCUDA featured on his YouTube channel, which you can solder on the board. You can do this yourself, but you probably don't want to. And what they allow you to do is adjust the potentiometer sensors when stick drift might have taken you out of the game. Button and D-pad press. This is also linked up. So you are going to have mechanical or digital switches for $20. I do recommend it. I don't have the option on my pre-built cinch controller. However, a lot of pro controllers I've tested for PS5 do have this option and I love it. Mechanical switches are faster to actuate than a rubber membrane switch. They're rated for millions of clicks. And in my opinion, they're just a joy to use. I like the feeling of them more. Do I need a mouse pad for a controller? Well, I generally don't drag my controllers across my desk. So no, I don't need a mouse pad. And then we slip on a banana peel here and bump our noggins, get a little bit of a knot, but then we ice it with a pack of peas. We have a really short warranty here, 30 day, which is astronomically, astronomically short for a premium or pro controller astronomically. In comparison, Hex and Scuff Gaming offer some of the shortest warranties in the pro controller game, and there's six months a pop. I, I bash on them quite a bit. A 30-day warranty, plus this is going to take it a step further. You also have an option to pay $35 for a six-month warranty. So what I would deem a somewhat acceptable warranty you have to pay for, that's not good. Now, you can send in a stock candidate donor controller, which most of these custom controller companies offer, but I rarely hear of gamers actually using this option, which makes sense. Do you really want to send in a controller and wait for for them to customize it? Probably not. You just want to get a new one, which is an extra $65. Makes sense. That's the MSRP of a factory OEM stock DualSense controller. It does fluctuate on Amazon, I know, but actually they were 70 when they came out, but 65 is the going rate. Standard build time, five to six business weeks or faster. So that is a pretty long lead time, but not the longest. Battle Beaver takes the cake there with about three months and zero communication, but rush that bad boy. So you're giving them the coffee they need for $28, one to two business weeks. That's up to you. That is substantially shorter, but that is a night on the town with your girl. No, that is not a night on the town. That is like one meal at Panda Express and a cup of coffee on the way home. Now, while warranty is a major issue, another huge one is going to be pricing. As Cinch Gaming is priced about 15 to 32% more expensive than all of its competitors. I'm not going to crunch numbers here in this video. I am going to be doing a comprehensive side by side by side by side comparison of all the PS5 DualSense controllers on the market currently, as I do have them in my possession. But this is not that video. This is a comprehensive review of the Cinch Gaming Crimson PS5 Pro remap. But as we're taking a deep dive into Cinch Gaming and right now their builder, we always talk about pricing, how much the pre-built or instant ships go for, and then how I recommend specking out a controller, maybe skimping out on some cosmetic or appearance options, but just getting the performance mods that you really need, like a remap ship and maybe some clicky triggers. You don't need them, but you want them real bad. Share in the screen to see this massive number, $377.75 shekels. This absolute hideous monstrosity over here is probably the ugliest controller I've ever seen, but I slapped every option on the builder on to see how high we can rack up that price tag. Now, this does not include the mouse pad or the extended warranty or expedited shipping. This is just everything that can come on this piece of plastic. $377.75. So just try I have a PS5 digital version and about $80 more than an Xbox Series S. This is not shocking or appalling. I mean, we're in the pro controller uh, room right now, for God's sake, but I have an Excel spreadsheet in my computer in preparation for that massive comparison with the lowest price of all of these builders, then the flagship offering from all of these companies, and then the average tested. And this isn't just with all the bells and whistles, nips and doodads. This is with the instant ships and this is with their entry levels. It is across the board, hell of expensive, but nothing is for no reason. So I started thinking to myself, maybe it's a strategic move. They want to be known as luxury controllers. Maybe uh, you're paying for the name or something, but you're paying scuff prices for a name that doesn't have scuff's long running reputation or Corsair's massive marketing or backing. So why are the controllers so expensive? Also, I said scuff pricing out the door for my scuff reflex pro it was $260 with tax and shipping. I'm going to move on from this whole rant or tangent about the pricing, but I'm going to say one more thing. And this isn't a hit piece on this controller or this company or anything like that. I think it's a beautiful gamepad and I'm enjoying playing with it and testing it, but can 
can we push this number to the left a little bit? The build cost cannot be that significant. The components you're sourcing can't be that expensive. $377 to wait six weeks for a controller that could break and not be covered in 30 days. In comparison, I'm not going to mention any specific names of competitors, but there are competitors out there that offer lifetime warranties, minus stick drift because it's not their modules, but the rear buttons, the hydro dipping, the clicky buttons and triggers, all that's covered for a lifetime. You get your controller in about two weeks for a fraction of this price. A little bit of a side note over here in this tab, it says PC gaming because I always explore these websites in their entirety. Their mouse pads actually do look really sick. They have some cool designs and they're only 13 bucks. So their controllers might be a little bit pricey, but the mouse pads are very reasonable and look really cool. I might actually buy one like legit. Also, if you're following along on your computer and you're thinking my screen doesn't look like yours, I do have a dark theme forced right now on my computer. This would all be white right now, basically flashbanging my corneas, but I won't stand for it. So if you just want a stock DualSense controller from Cinch, $75. We're going to skip over the cosmetic or appearance options. We're just going to go for the performance goodies that's going to help you get them kills and pay the bills. Not really pay the bills unless you're a competitive esports athlete or something. Swappable thumbsticks. You want these. This is just the coloration of anti-friction rings. All stock PS5 controllers have anti-friction rings on the outside of the thumbstick gates, so you don't need to pop for these. This is just a cosmetic mod. You absolutely want four back buttons. That's not even a question here. And you do want the remap shed. That might be a question, but it's been answered. You want it for sure. So $85 to put four buttons on the back of this gamepad and an extra $23 to be able to remap them. You want the mechanical triggers and bumpers. The stick drift protection module. Every other controller you have does not have this on board. How's your experience with stick drift been? That will answer if you think $40 is worth this. For me, no. I've had a really good run or track record with stick drift minus the Elite Series 2 core, which... Ooh, back to back stick drift right out of the box on that one. You also want the D-pad and face buttons clicky as well. That's for sure. I refuse to pay for the extended warranty. I'm not going to send you in a controller and standard build time will do just fine. So just for the performance modifications that I would recommend specking on this controller. So this would be a AK-40 Kevin as tested controller over here. $262, which I am not going to name any specific competitors during this section because this is not a comparison video. This is a review, but a competitor does offer a pretty much identical layout for $180 and another competitor, low 200s, identical layout as well. So, can you guys line up in an orderly fashion, single file, please? It's time for the cons, pros, and verdicts. We're going to start with the negativity because I know you want it. So we're going to start with the cons, shortcomings, or areas of improvement. This is for you, the consumer, looking for a controller. This is also for Cinch Gaming so they can make improvements with their next version or iteration of this controller. I would genuinely like to see a one-year warranty, but I know that's not going to happen. I've been watching a lot of Pawn Stars. I know how negotiation works. I'm going to start at one year. Cinch Gaming, you're down here at three months right now. Can we meet at the middle at six months? That's beneficial for everyone. How many more returns? returns or refund request you think you're going to get in that last three months versus that first three months. As mentioned earlier, their base level, their flagship, as well as their instant ships or pre-builds are all 15 to 32 percent more expensive than the competitors all the competitors. I'm sick of holding this. I'm going to put it on a stand. I'd like to see the color customization option of trigger colors added to the builder. Next up, there's no instruction card explaining how to remap the rear buttons, and I could not find the instructions on their website or Google or anything. But then once I discovered how to remap the buttons, which again is a journey to actually figure out how to remap them, it should be so simple. It should be a little card. Once I discovered how to actually remap them, I wasn't satisfied with the process because it takes forever per each button. And if you're holding down one of those rear buttons, Granted, you have to hold it down for a long time, like 20 seconds. But I like how every other custom DualSense controller company is doing it, where you have to press something on the front of the controller, like the mute button or the share button in combination with a rear button and face button. So you would never press that combination of buttons in game on accident. As with the Cinch controller, I could see somebody holding down crouch or something and going into remapping mode. Granted, you'd have to hold it down for like 20 seconds. And last but not least, it's going to be the biggest con or shortcoming, in my opinion, is going to be the rear button suite. It's just not comfortable for for me, as I really cannot find a comfortable way to cover all four of the buttons. This seems like it's going to be the play using my ring finger for the bottom two and my middle finger for the top two, but it's incredibly cramped and my fingers are smashed together like that. And I don't really like that. And I can't use my middle fingers to press both of the buttons. Well, you can, but it's 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 difficult because they all bleed together. I mean, I can cover all four of the buttons with just my middle fingers. That's too close together for me. That's what you're going to get. You cannot customize the placement like uh, Battle Beaver offers with their builder. A bunch of holes 
that they can drill into the rear shell for placement. That also has a shortcoming or setback, which I mentioned during that review. So for somebody that uses rear buttons damn near exclusively when playing video games, it has gotten to the point over the last two years to where I hardly ever use face buttons anymore. Of course, if I'm playing an RTS or a racing game or a platformer, I'm probably not even using a paddle controller. But if I'm using a rear button or paddle controller, I don't really use the face buttons hardly at all, sweetheart. And unfortunately, I found myself using the face buttons when playing with this controller, which should never be the case with a pro controller. And I think it's just because I'm not comfortable using these rear buttons. However, if you have smaller hands, my girlfriend actually likes these rear buttons because she has smaller fingers and she can cover all four of them pretty comfortably. Now onto the pros. What is Cinch Gaming doing right? Why would you pick up one of these controllers? First of all, cosmetically, they do have a lot of customization options. Also, the pre-built unit that I received was absolutely gorgeous. Next is going to be the mechanical bumpers and triggers, specifically the triggers. They are fantastic. I've tested the PS5 mechanical triggers from Scuff, Hex Gaming, AIM, Battle Beaver, Evil, and a bunch of other razor. Oh, that's actually right next to me here. Clickety clickety. These are the best. Why? They are light, but not too light. Enough resistance to actually actuate. Here's what here's what it is. I think I just figured it out as I'm talking, as I'm doing the review. It's that additional one millimeter of pull. These have two millimeters versus one millimeter, which most of the competitors have. And I actually like that. I think that little additional bit of take up, which isn't slop or dead space or anything like that. It's perfect. That in combination with the resistance being perfectly balanced to where I'm not going to accidentally actuate these triggers, but they're there when I need them and they're quiet. The only thing that could possibly make these better would be trigger locks where you get the full pull and then you turn on a little lever or switch and then they become these clicks. But dang, these are amazing. Five out of five. Next up, the thumbsticks performed incredibly well in Gamepad Tester. That's kind of just randomized or pick of the lot because these are just stock Sony potentiometer thumbsticks. So could have just been a good batch from Sony. Uh, but the thumbsticks did perform great. And the last pro to play devil's advocate a little bit is going to be these rear buttons would be very good if you have tiny hands. If you're always complaining that PS5 DualSense controllers are too big for you or that you don't like any of the pro controllers on the market because the paddles have your hands spaced out weird and stuff, this is absolutely perfect for you. As for the verdict, I've been alluding to it throughout the video Unfortunately, Cinch Gaming isn't offering a good value in the pro controller market currently, as all their controllers are 15 to 32% more expensive than the competitors, with a warranty that is half or even a quarter of the length. And all that would be acceptable or swallowable for me if it had a kick-ass rear button design. But for me, it's uncomfortable, cramped, and I can't cover all four of the buttons simultaneously comfortably. But it has been a joy to review. I greatly appreciate Cinch Gaming sending it out. Cinch Gaming is linked in the description below, alongside an exclusive discount code for my audience. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm going to go pick up one of those mouse pads I was talking about earlier. They're actually pretty sweet. If you enjoyed the video, liking it helps it to get seen by more gamers. This information will reach in a system as well, which in turn helps me grow this little channel, which I do greatly appreciate. Subscribe for more content like this. I cover news in the gaming community and industry, tutorials helping you get set up streaming and YouTubing, as well as honest gaming product reviews, keyboards, mice, headsets, controllers, mics, chairs, etc. There are some hefty exclusive discount codes found only in the description of my videos and only for the audience here at Gamer Heaven. I have links to all my other platforms and socials in the description below to get in touch with myself and the stallions and stallionettes of gamer heaven join the community discord and check me out at twitch.tv where i go live every other leap year on a blue moon if it falls into an odd calendar number and my ph balance is on point just kidding starting june i'm going to be live streaming a lot thanks for watching this has been ak40 kevin hosting gamer heaven and i'll see you tomorrow because i upload daily all the time 60 percent of the time sometimes most of the time peace